Welcome to Small Girl Big Talk, where we talk about all the big stuff in adulthood like relationships, self-identity, money, health, and all the other important things that you care about. I'm your host, Wendy, and my hope for this podcast is for it to bring comfort and help you to feel a little bit less alone in your adulthood journey. I am really overwhelmed and tired. I've been working back to back on weekdays and on weekends for the last four months. One of the weekends that I was not working, I was traveling on a road trip for a wedding, which was fun, but it was also physically tiring. And on top of that, I'm still trying to stick to my weekly posting schedule for this podcast. And just last week, I realized that my period is coming this week. And that explains a lot on why I've been feeling physically and mentally really tired because of my hormones. And if you've been listening to my podcast for a while now, you should know the kind of person that I am. I track all sorts of metrics and numbers in my life just to know that I am moving forward. I have always been ambitious. And like I shared in episode three, I track all sorts of metrics and numbers to improve my life. Even though I'm at a stage where I'm trying to live a really balanced life, I still track the numbers just to make sure that I live a balanced life. I understand that there is going to be different seasons in our life where at times we might need to focus more on our career or if our family has any emergency, we might need to spend more time in our family and we might not be able to have time to focus on other aspects of our lives. I understand that this is part and parcel of living. And I also know that there are a lot of things that I can still be grateful for today. Like the fact that I have an amazing partner like Kevin to be going through life with. And I have this amazing podcast community that keeps me going on. But I honestly just want to don't give a fuck and give up and just go and sleep. (laughs) Am I being too honest right now? I think I am, but it's okay. That's what I'm trying to achieve here in my podcast, right? (laughs) And what I'm trying to say is like at times like that, it got me wondering, why was I always so ambitious? Like, do I really need to be so ambitious? Do I really need to constantly be focusing on improving myself to be growing? And that is kind of what I want to talk about today, about excessive ambition that we have. And how did I get out of it? How did I go from, you know, burned out to really living a balanced life? And even as I am living a balanced life right now, there are bound to be time where we get overwhelmed, like what I am experiencing right now. And I'll be sharing with you on how I deal with times like that as well. So hopefully, if you are going through something that is overwhelming you, and you are feeling really frustrated and tired and feeling exactly like how I'm feeling, I hope that this podcast is going to help you. So back to the topic, I was questioning like, why was I so obsessed with this ambition that I have in life? Number one, maybe it is just my personality. Maybe I was built like that. Or number two, it could be nurtured when I was growing up. I went to a Chinese primary school, which was pretty strict. And the peer pressure there was pretty intense when I was growing up. Like the average for our grade was 90% for almost all six years of my primary school. And with that grade, I actually went to a secondary school that takes in only straight A's or almost straight A students. And even with university, I got in with a scholarship as well. So I was surrounded by a lot of scholars. And the nature of spending time with all these people, they are just really competitive. And I think being surrounded by such people for a long time, you just kind of start to think like them and be like them. So that could be another reason why I've been pretty ambitious all my life. And when I finally got into the entrepreneurial path, right, I was exposed to content from people like Gary Vaynerchuk or Tony Robbins who are always pushing for us to go, 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 to hustle, hustle, hustle. I did also find myself a business mentor who is also my current employer who literally has a tagline that says, stay humble, hustle, hard. 
In the past few years, I really immersed myself in this hustle culture and I think that has been my norm for the longest time and I was used to that. It wasn't until a year plus ago, I was kind of burnt out and I started questioning everything and I spent the last year really detaching myself from this culture to be able to have a better view of how I want my life to be and who I am as a person and how can I make this all work together for myself. So it has been a journey for me to get out of the hustle culture, but it is still embedded in me to be ambitious. And I want to say something here. I don't think that hustle is bad. I do believe that you have to work in order to get what you want. The great things that you want in life, they don't come easy. And if at any point, when you hear that there is a deal or there is a way for you to get a lot of money or to achieve some sort of success by doing very little, it's likely going to be a scam. And I'm not going to lie. I'm sharing with you based on my personal experience because in the last few years, I did fall into two scams that costed me a little bit less than 5,000 ringgit. It's not a lot, but it is enough to make you feel painful and stupid that you fell for it. But yeah, it happens because there are a lot of evil people out there who want to take advantage of you. And remember, when things seem to be too easy, it's probably going to be a scam. On top of that, I feel like pop culture portrayed manifestation and made it look really easy as well. I shared this in the last episode and I'm going to explain to you again. Manifestation doesn't just work by having you thinking or imagining about it and the outcome is going to come to you. No, you still have to work towards making it happen. It's just that through manifestation, when you indeed believe that something is meant for you, it makes it easier for you to flow towards the outcome. Perhaps it is a Gen X or a millennial thing that we were raised to think that we have to work hard in order to get what we want. Which is why whenever we come across Gen Z, we always think that they are really entitled or they are weak and they couldn't handle hard work. But what if we are meant to learn about this mindset from the Gen Z as well? You know how that there are certain things that we saw our parents go through and we learned from their mistake and avoided them? I believe that Gen Z has also observed something from our generation or our parents' generation and are avoiding something as well. And my conclusion is this. Instead of just blindly following what everyone else in our previous generation and our generation thinks, and instead of judging Gen Z for being entitled or not like us at all, I realized that it's truly about finding the balance between these two school of thoughts where we really need to hustle to get to where we want, but we also should be enjoying life and taking things easier to get to where we want. Because what is the point of living when we are just going to be blindly hustling so hard that we missed out? the experience of living itself. And that is when I decided to preach the concept of the soft hustle. Instead of hustling so hard, you can hustle soft to get to where you want. What we want to do is truly to work towards where we want, where we put in the energy, the strategy, and the effort to get to where we want, while also experience life through play, rest, and time with our loved ones. And that is how I've been living my life in the past year or so. And with this soft hustle, it doesn't mean that life is going to be easy. You are still going to have overwhelming moments like how I'm going through right now because life is not a straight road. Life is going to happen to you. There is going to be shitty things that happen. And we sometimes just have too much to handle when we are ambitious. But at least at this moment, when I am going through this season of my life, I am not burnt out. If anything, I find that with the soft hustle, it has become a cushion to the impact of pressure that I am going through. Instead of hustling hard, 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 and then have a big burnout, I am hustling slow 
And when something shitty happens, I fall, but I'm able to bounce back up and move on pretty quickly. And right now, I am going to share with you a few ways that I've learned to deal with this overwhelming season in my life. Number one, you have to accept that life is not going to go as you plan and you need to release your control. I understand how it feels to want to have control over every single thing, thinking that you are able to make things right for yourself. Yes, sometimes we need to fix things by ourselves, but most of the time, you just need to learn to release and let life happen for you. You know, you got to embrace the ups and the downs and just trust that whatever is meant to you will come to you. Number two, you have to also practice self-compassion. Go easy on yourself. For me personally, I have always been pretty disciplined when it comes to certain goal or ambition that I've set for myself. But in this past two weeks of feeling so tired and stressed out, I had to learn to let go and accept that I cannot achieve every single thing at once. I actually allowed myself to delay my weekly podcast posting time last week because I was just too tired and I knew that if I were to force myself to record it a day earlier, I wouldn't be able to flow through my conversations as I'm talking to you. And because of the delay, I found that I've created one of my favorite episodes so far and I actually received really good response about it as well. I have also practiced very minimal workout because physically I am just in pain right now. Instead of forcing myself to go to the gym to stay disciplined, I actually just allowed myself to practice like 20 minutes of yoga to allow myself to align my breath again. I also skipped intermittent fasting in this past week because I honestly just can't care about skipping my meals. If I'm hungry, I'm just going to eat. And I have also been eating a lot more takeouts because I just didn't have the time to make healthy food. And I think that as long as I'm able to get back on track, it's okay. I'm just allowing myself to do all these things when I need to. But having that said, I do have some things that I insisted to stay on doing because I know that by practicing this discipline, it is going to help me to feel better in my current situation as well. So one of it is actually to make sure that I'm getting about seven to seven and a half hours of sleep because I find that when I get enough sleep, I actually function better during the day and my mood is a lot better and my energy is a lot better as well. So I just felt like when I'm able to honor a good sleep, I actually can spend lesser time to complete my tasks during the day. So I've been able to at least get seven hours or six plus plus almost seven hours of sleep. I also start to meditating as much as I can when I wake up because at times like that, meditating really allows me to be aware of the thoughts that I have in my head. It allows me to understand why am I being anxious about certain things. And with that knowledge, I'm actually able to talk myself out of those negative thoughts in my head and it was really helpful in that sense. And another thing that I've insisted on doing is to actually keep on creating this podcast episode because I find that creating this podcast has been pretty self-healing for me as I talk about all these problems that I'm going through. Next up, you can also try to break things down in smaller digestible chunks and tackle them one by one. So I am a sucker for list. And what I like to do is I like to dump everything that's on my head onto an empty note. And then I would compartmentalize them into different categories, whether it's work, personal, home, podcast, or other things. And based on the urgency of when a task needs to be done, I would slowly tackle them by the day. For example, if you are really overwhelmed and you feel like your house is really messy right now, instead of just stressing out that you have to clean your house all at once, maybe what you can do is to actually clean your bathroom today as you are showering and then tomorrow change your bed sheets and then the third day 
do your laundry. You see, you tackle them one by one by the day in times that you can handle it. Or for myself, you know how I was saying that I actually had a lot of takeouts last week because I didn't have time to cook and I didn't have groceries. I finally had the chance to make a grocery list last weekend and I asked Kevin to help me to go get the groceries. And speaking of getting help, that is my tip number four, which is to ask for help. And I hate to break it to you, but you are not going to receive any award or prize or applause for being the most independent and strong person in the room. So instead of sticking to that ego that you have, I want to encourage you to communicate about your needs and ask for help from your loved ones. If they love you, if they care about you, they would be more than happy to be able to help you to ease your burden. So start delegating, start asking for help. If you need help from a friend to get groceries, talk to them. If you just need to tell someone about the pressure that you have in work, you can just talk to them without asking them to give you an advice. If you keep keeping things to yourself, you are going to explode one day. When that happens, it's not going to look good for you or for anybody around you. So that said, I had my moments where I still feel like, fuck it, I don't want to give a fuck anymore. And I end up procrastinating for a few hours scrolling on TikTok. I did that quite a lot in this past week. But with these things that I just shared you, after those moments of procrastination, I was able to slowly get back on track by tackling my digestible tasks one by one. And I am still moving on. And I like to think that that is what life is really about. It's really about keep on moving forward after a break, after a rest, after a failure, or even after a celebration. Life just keeps on going on. If you are feeling overwhelmed right now, maybe you feel like you are drowning in your problems and all these things that you need to do, I hope that what I shared today is able to help you to at least bit by bit tackle your problem to slowly swim towards the surface so that you can breathe again. You know, as I was writing and planning for this podcast episode today, for those of you who are watching the video podcast, you would notice that I'm reading out of my book instead of my laptop today. This notes end up to be kind of like a journal entry that ended up being really therapeutic for myself because I was able to kind of look into my thoughts and it was able to help me to figure out what exactly was bothering me as well. And so I want to end this episode by thanking you for tuning in and listening to my rant and helping me to figure out all the thoughts that I have in my mind. I hope to see you in my next episode. And this is goodbye. Bye.